Hello again dudes, my name is Chris Cantron and welcome to my garden. Now, I'm the director of Caledonian Conservation Limited in Ecological Consultancy. I'm also an area organiser for the spider recording scheme and my passion is spiders. At the moment, for very good reasons, we can't get out and about surveying just now. So I've decided to survey my garden and I'd like to invite you to join me and survey yours. Get out there, look for bugs and beasties in your back garden. And today, I'm going to talk to you about something that hopefully you might have in your shed, a garden sieve. These can be really great for finding bugs and beasties, including spiders. But before we get onto that, I would just like to take you through some sort of spider collecting or surveying or looking at basics that I think if you really want to give this a go, you should try and get a hold of. So dudes, as promised, here are some basics to get you started on having a bit of a closer look at spiders. These books are both excellent. Britain's Spiders Field Guide is the ideal starting point if you want to get into spiders. It's full of fantastic pictures, information on where and when to find spiders. It's absolutely superb. And I don't just say that because it includes photos of mine. This book I cannot recommend highly enough if you want to take it to the next level. It includes keys and genital diagrams and these fantastic painted colour plates of various spiders in Britain. Other useful bits of equipment? Well, a spike pot. Doesn't go amiss. Get your spider in there, get a closer look at it. They're pretty cool, relatively easy to get hold of. Kids love them. A pooter. These allow you to pick up spiders gently without damaging them. So you basically suck in the tube end and put this against the spider and it goes whoop, into here. Um, the important thing always, make sure that that gauze or whatever valve you're using is intact. I've had quite a few pooter malfunctions where I have ended up swallowing spiders and deadwood and beetles and other things. Most recently I think was doing a survey in Glasgow um, and I think some passers-by were a bit surprised by um, my reaction and some of those spiders coming out. And I can say to anyone who's interested, different spiders do taste different. And their textures are different too. Moving around. Magnifying glass or a hand lens of some kind is great. You can get a closer look without a microscope. Something maybe a bit more robust, a bit more magnification, a bit clearer if you want to take it a bit further. And the tuning fork. It's essential. Get one. But I'm going to save this for a rainy day. So we're now at the back the very back of my back garden, where I am blessed with an abundance of leaf litter. Now, I make leaf moulds for fertilising my garden and such with this, but this is really great habitat for invertebrates. Loads of spiders love to live in this, beetles, springtails, flies, it's fantastic. So if you happen to still have some leaves left over at the back of your garden after winter, then this is the time. Get out there, see what you can find. Now, as well as a garden sieve, you are going to need one other bit of equipment, and that is something like this. I'm using a white tray. I've got lots of white trays for work, and I also use them for events with kids and things, showing them bugs. But you don't need a white tray. You don't need something specialist. You could just have a white sheet, or some plastic, or a bowl, just whatever you can to shake these bugs out onto to make them a bit more visible so as you can spot them. Now you really want to fill the sieve up with a bunch of leaves and you want to make sure that you get lots of this nice damp stuff too because a lot of the bugs are going to be down in that. And fill it up. Nice big mix and you're good to go. So, what have we found? There's a fair few things moving around in there, and particularly exciting to me is there is a Clubiona. Yes, looks like another wee male. So that's going to be fun to see what we've got. We'll need to get it back to the lab. You may earlier have noticed me using this, my pooter. It collected the clubiona delicately without damaging it, which is fantastic. And now I'm going to take the opportunity 
to have a closer look. You don't need a microscope to look at bugs closely. You just need a hand lens or some kind of magnifying glass. And if you take the lens and hold it against your eye, and then take what you've caught, you can move it closer until it comes into focus, and you can observe the spider or other bugs are available in close detail while they're alive without the need of a lab at all. It's fantastic. So my dudes, I hope you enjoyed visiting my garden again. Today, hopefully you've learned some of the sort of basic things that would be useful to have a bit of a closer look at spiders and other bugs around your house in your garden. And maybe you've learned a technique that you're going to go away and do yourself. If you've got one of these, garden sieve or something similar hanging around, you can get out there, get some vegetation in, shake it away. And I'd be really interested to hear what you get. And for those of you wondering, Clobiona terrestris, terrestrial sack weaver again. So that's two Clobiona terrestris in a couple of days. That's pretty cool, huh? So until next time, see you later dudes.